Uh, by the way, today and only today, when you mention uh, Tanya Manley's name at the Berkeley County Health Department, you get a free radon test kit. She's picking up the tab all day long. Very generous of Tanya <laughs> Huzzah. To, Huzzah. to do that. Uh, you know, just again, the generosity of our first guests each day and picking up the 100% cost of the free radon test kit blows you, me away. You know, with her underwriting that, I'm gonna she's going to come to me and ask for a raise to be able to pay for those. <laughs> Sometimes you got to do what you got to do, Bill. You do. You gotta, I'll have to write a grant to be able to underwrite the grant. You know what I would do? I would take out a personal loan from New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap <laughs> against go. future book sales. We could say that about the Admiral if he was here today, but we could do that for him. We can, we can Actually, it's easier for the guy who's not here. Yes, so, absolutely. <laughs> take a vote. Okay, Bring pass. the checkbook next time. Very nice. I understand you might be potentially auctioning a character name in your book at the uh, hospice. I am, auction. in fact. Yeah, you can. Um, How does it work? People will bid to have their name as as a character in the book that comes out. It's called uh, Heat Seeker. Will be out in twenty twenty four. The the flip side of that is all the good guys are taken. So it undoubtedly be a bad guy and a bad nice. person, and it rarely ends well. But it can be a lot of fun. It doesn't have to be your own name. It could be that that guy who beat you up in second grade. You can <laughs> you can put them through misery. Now is your chance to yeah, extract your yeah. yeah, right. Very nice. Uh, Tanya, let's say good morning to you, and uh, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. Good morning. How long have you been the nurse director at the health department? For about six months now. What did you do before then? I worked in long-term care um, for about 24 years. 24 years of long-term care? Yes. Wow. And what made you decide to make the change to the health department? I think probably COVID, number one, and the rules, regulations of long-term care survey process. Okay. And uh, tell me what your job is at the health department, um, other than the title of nurse director and the person who pays for the free rate on test kits today. I've been working as a staff nurse as, long, as well as the nurse director and uh, just foreseeing um, the scheduling and the programs that we offer and participating with promoting um, healthy care for people in the community. And how is your staff right now? Are you fully hired or are you still looking? We're still looking for nurses. Uh, we're in the process of hopefully hiring somebody. Um, and we do have one staff nurse in Berkeley County and in Morgan County, we have two nurses working. Uh, how are you actively trying to fill those roles? Do you go to colleges to recruit or you just post and hope people call or what? I think that uh, we advertise online um, on our Facebook site and then also by word of mouth when going into the community and providing outreach programs, um, offering, you know, talking with other nurses and telling them that we have positions available. Bill, and I understand your pay is a bit more competitive now than it might have been a couple of years ago. It is um, at way way more competitive, and that was due to a lot of a lot of hard work on the behalf of the health department and the board to get those salaries up. It's uh, actually quite quite well now for a nurse uh, nurse two, which is somebody either has a little bit of experience being a registered nurse or a uh, or a or their bachelor's degree. Um, it starts off at right about seventy three thousand um, dollars, so it's way better than what it used to be mm -hmm. in the high 30,000, low 40,000 range. Um, so it's way, way better than it used to be a couple odd years ago. Um, so we got that special hiring rate that, and for a couple of our positions, not only just nursing, but sanitarians as well. So we uh, have to hire everybody through West Virginia Division of Personnel. So it's a competitive process. Um, we get those, we get the names referred to us. It's a lengthy process just to get someone hired. But once they, once they get in the door, the actual benefits are incredible working for public health and uh, not many positions can you find that you're working at, outside of a pandemic, mm -hmm. of course, but working 8.30 to 4.30 Monday through Friday, every state and federal holiday off with pay, 100% paid health insurance, medical vision, nice. uh, three weeks vacation a year, 18 sick days a year. Yeah, it's pretty good benefits. And that's to start? That's to start off with, yeah. And it just gets better. Maybe we should all get a nursing degree. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Does it pay better than a writer? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> 11 months of the year, yes, but that one month, no. <laughs> right. Yeah, John? I, what kind of nurses are you looking for? 
Nurses who like to deal with the public, um, I think you have to be... As opposed to <laughs> nurses who don't want to work with the public. True. Um, but, you know, the interaction with the public and providing education, teaching, interviewing them, finding out what their needs are, what they need help with, and then assisting with getting resources and providing education and getting them the help they need. What kind of patient care does the health department nursing group do? We offer uh, several programs. The biggest program, I believe, is our immunization program, but we also have family planning. Uh, we do breast and cervical screening uh, for cancer, and we have a harm reduction program, and also we participate um, with the state program for TB elimination. So if people... Um, are referred to us uh, with suspected symptoms of TB, then we follow them up and work them up. And if they are positive or have latent TB, then we provide the medication and the follow-up for them. There was an item on the news this morning that said that there's a, a decrease in immunizations, not COVID sort of stole all the oxygen out of the room when it comes to immunizations, mm -hmm. but for polio and measles and all of that, 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 those immunization rates have gone down nationwide. Are we seeing that locally? I don't think so because uh, our school system requires immunizations for all school um, children who enter the school system and also for the daycare centers. So we have a very robust fast vaccination program and uh, I don't think that we're one of the states you know seeing that I have a scar on my arm from when I was a little boy from my polio vaccine if polio were to come back for example would that still be good for me yes yes actually it's probably from your smallpox Oh, that's right. It was the polio yeah. came in the, in in the, the sugar, sugar cube. cube. That's yeah. right. This is smallpox. Yeah. We're going small to date ourselves okay. when we say yeah. our, our polio yeah. was given on the sugar cube. Yeah, but yeah you yeah. have that smallpox there, and some of us have had it multiple times. If you've been in the military, you would have had a, uh, a repeat um, vaccination for that for a while ago. Anyway, and then um, uh, probably about ten years ago, they had a, a threat. Thre ten, fifteen years ago, they had a threat of smallpox maybe coming back. So a lot of first line public health workers were revaccinated. Did they change that vaccine in, in uh, the way it's injected? Because I don't like my kids don't have the same scar on their delt that I have on mine, and everyone in my generation had. Yeah, it's a single injection now. You're talking about for smallpox? Whatever the one that left the big scar on your shoulder, yeah. John was talking about. They don't do those anymore. Um, so, um, usually, be about bifurcated needles yeah. Yeah. and a bunch of little jabs in there. I'm thinking of the chicken pox. Yeah, but um, yeah. so it's pretty much eradicated. Yeah. So they just stopped um, so giving them. It's not a vaccination. Oh, okay. it's, yeah. Well, that's neat. Unless you're in the military, then you make it. Hey, you mentioned tuberculosis and symptoms of tuberculosis. What are symptoms of um, TB? People who have night sweats, uh, weight loss, uh, blood in their sputum. Um, but the, what we're seeing is uh, some places require the TB testing, the T-spot testing, or quantiferon. And um, people are tested um, when they move into the country. Uh, people are tested when they get new jobs, um, especially in the healthcare profession. And if they test positive, um, for PPD, then we move on and we do a blood test, a quantiferon or a uh, T-spot. And if those tests are positive and you have not had previously had the BCG vaccine, then you're followed up with a chest X-ray and then that referral is made. But if anybody experiences the night sweats, weight loss, blood in their sputum, um, then they should, you know, go see the physician and be tested uh, for those symptoms. TB's got to be pretty uncommon. I mean, I don't know that I've known anybody in my life who's had tuberculosis. It is uncommon, but it is on the uh, slow increase. 
um, in Berkeley County. And what we're seeing is we do have some people in the county, but there are people who are moving in from other countries um, who are coming in and they are um, testing positive and um, with latent TB. So we are seeing a slight increase. How is it passed from person to person? It can be passed if the person is uh, active. If they're latent TB, it is not transmissible, but it would be through cough, um, airborne. It's an airborne um, bacteria. Uh, is there a vaccine you can get to keep you from getting tuberculosis, or is just you're just unlucky because you came across somebody who has it? Years ago, they used to give the in the other countries, they gave the BCG vaccine, but there is no vaccine for to prevent TB. Is it deadly if I'm in otherwise good health? I would not think so. If it goes untreated and goes for years and you develop other comorbidities, it could be. All right, that's one more thing to watch out for, Gilstrap. <laughs> Interesting bit of trivia. A friend of mine who's an expert in 19th century stuff told me that if you buy fine linen from back in the 19th century when TB was, was rampant, it's often, we're talking about ladies' linens, handkerchiefs, that sort of thing. They're decorated with strawberries or raspberries or apples, a little the embroidery that's on it. And that was to give plausible deniability for when the lady coughed into her handkerchief and there was a flash of red, then it might not be blood. So it was just, it was, it was a way of, of dealing with it in high society. Oh, no kidding. Hiding your TB. Yeah. A cover-up. Well, there's nothing to do about it. You know, it, it, back then, right, I guess you go yeah. into some sanatorium somewhere. And... Yeah. We see also, uh, it have been, at least in the past, I guess it's still, you see a good uh, number of uh, people showing positive for TB that are incarcerated as well. Yes. Um, coming from the jails, and they're in close, really close proximity with each other. And... That has to be a germ farm. It, oh, it has to be. And, and they're, they're overloaded, as we hear so many times. And um, there's been times in the past when the, uh, the public health nurses have had to go into the jails and, and uh, get, the, get the patients treated and, and tested. I'm glad we don't have to do that now. Absolutely. They have, they have their own nurses there. I have a Facebook uh, audience question for you, Tanya. It's from Faith Hall. Is there hep this could be for you too, Bill. Mm -hmm. Is there hepatitis screening for food workers? Well, uh, the hepatitis you'd be looking at there from Faith, and, and, and I'm glad she asked that. Um, Faith is really, uh, really great at what she does there at the Ruotan, and uh, it's a, um, uh, there's not. Um, you, 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 there's vaccinations for hepatitis, um, and there's and hepatitis A and hepatitis B. Um, C is also a, a prevalent one, but we don't have a vaccine for that. Um, so... Uh, is there testing for hepatitis A, Tanya? We can test for um, hepatitis B and hepatitis C uh, through a state funding program, but we do not test for hepatitis A. And the reason I asked about that for healthcare workers is hepatitis A is routinely passed by, by your hands. It's a lot of times poor hygiene, mm -hmm. um, not washing your hands. So it's, it's kind of fecal oral, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, so it's pretty direct. You, 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 <laughs> yeah, there's no, no doubt about what you're talking about. We, we, we see that a lot of times in, in orchards, um, yeah. unbelievable. And whether you believe it or not, um, you know, the orchard workers don't always, uh, have restrooms that they go to and they're going to wash their hands when they're out there picking, uh, picking the fruits for us. And then if you bring those home and you're not washing them mm -hmm. and, things of that nature so but um definitely a vaccination available for hepatitis a and b charlotte norris who by the way i just got a press release uh saw this morning as the stephanie pearson boys and girls clubs uh um person of the year uh mm -hmm. charlotte congratulations oh, yes. said her dad had tb when she was eight and had to go to a sanitarium for weeks i guess that's what they did with you when yes. you had tb then right yes yeah and, and again congratulations to you charlotte um, now, a uh, couple questions for you. Uh, I had a feature this morning of uh, one of our, the national programs we run in the morning that uh, talked about uh, COVID boosters. We don't hear a whole lot about COVID boosters uh, anymore, and we don't hear a whole lot about COVID numbers anymore. Has it just gone away? 
No, you looked it, at Bill first. <laughs> like, am I allowed to say what I want to say here? Well, I'll say something, and then Bill can follow up with that. Um, our COVID numbers in Berkeley County are definitely going down, um, but I think that also uh, is to do with a lot of people are doing home testing, and if they do home testing, um, then they don't report to the health department. Mm -hmm. But all in all, uh, it is going going down, um, but it's still out there. Um, as for the vaccines, um, we are currently still carrying um, the vaccines for about approximately another three, four weeks. But then um, after that, it is uncertain um, if they'll be available. And, and the main reason that is the vaccine that we have now is being provided free of charge. You come in and get vaccinated for COVID, there's no charge at all. Um, the, at that point, the, uh, the government is going to stop subsidizing that vaccine. And it's still going to be available, um, just most likely it's not going to be at the health department because the quantity that you have to purchase the vaccine in, and then you can bill people's insurance companies for it, um, which we do bill insurance companies, but the quantity that you have to purchase um, is pretty large and we don't have abilities to have it in an ultra cold freezer. We don't have one of those. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll have to kind of reach around to your pharmacies um, to be able to get vaccinated for boosters um, or start your vaccination series at that point because we just don't have the ability to store sure. it and there'll be a lot of waste. So it, for a while we were chasing our tail on this because there was always a new variant that came out that the previous vaccine didn't cover just yet so we had to wait till you got the next development of a vaccine and then another new variant would come out and now we don't hear about new variants is, is it that we got bored with covid and we just stopped updating in the news what the variants are or has it really stopped mutating i just the last uh, vaccine that was offered has the omicron in it so the moderna and the pfizer have the bivalent offered and that currently is the top dog that is you know the last one that's out there right now i think we've acquired what we were looking for for that herd immunity um, people are still getting they're still getting uh, covid mm -hmm. and as soon as you start getting those symptoms you are going to go out and look for a test kit or they're going to come to the health department and say hey do you all have test kits or or we're going to get those test kits and we're going to test ourselves so yeah those numbers don't get reported so our actual numbers are very low in the grand scheme of things right now compared to what they were um, we see uh, our epidemiologists report every month uh, seeing how low those numbers are getting and right now in a given month they're maybe around 20 that we get reported to us at the health department and that's just through your primary care uh, physicians and and testing sites but um, we um, we're just seeing those numbers go so low and then uh, you know it's kind of faded out of the media yes uh, pretty much mm -hmm. The, the, the COVID is still there, and it's it's now uh, an endemic, so we're going to live with this. And it with our herd immunity, the people and a lot of people have been vaccinated, so at least they have some level of immunity to it, so the symptoms aren't as bad. Um, but, yeah, just it's not in the media. So that's why we're not dealing with it. Also, in the early days of the pandemic, it seemed that nobody really knew how to <clears> – <throat> excuse me, nobody really knew how to treat this. You go to the hospital and – and they, they just try to figure out what to do. I, I'm, I'm going to presume that the treatment strategies have sort of stabilized and, and the, the doctors are able to control it more in the, in the clinical setting, or am I wrong? For the most part, you're just treating your symptoms. Yeah. You're not treating COVID. You're treating your symptoms. Right. So uh, the flu shot this year, have you gotten stats on how effective it was? For the first time in my life, I got the flu shot, and I didn't get the flu. A lot of people I knew got the flu. I didn't get the flu. Any idea? No. I don't have any. I don't either. Did you give out many flu shots this year? Ooh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sign of yes. The and you went woo, so. Yeah. Um, they were out in the school systems vaccinating for flu, for the teachers, and, and the high number of places we went to, the the um, uh, senior centers and places that they went out to, and, uh, and the number, high number of people that come into the health department. It was a, it was a pretty uh, intense um, vaccination season. Daniel, did you see many people getting the flu shot? 
I started uh, at the health department October 3rd, and the school system was just chomping at the bit. When are you coming to vaccinate the teachers? And uh, October and November, we had in Berkeley and Morgan County about 30 outreach programs, and uh, we were busy, busy. And it was probably about 14, 1500 flu vaccines with uh, four nurses giving Ooh. the vaccines. So we were busy. So what are the logistics if somebody wants to go and, and get an immunization or specifically an immunization, whether it's for COVID or flu or whatever, they just go to the health department and say, hey, I'm here. And we'll we ask them to call and schedule an appointment. Um, we, we will take walk-ins, but the goal is, especially with the COVID vaccines, to plan for a certain day because we don't want to waste extra vaccines out of the vial. Uh, immunizations, you know, we will do pretty much any day. Monday is a busy day. Anybody who has children under the age of 18, uh, we require that they bring previous vaccine um, documentation with them, a record if they're not in West Virginia CIS, which is uh, the state program for documenting vaccines. Um, but with that documentation, then they can bring the children in and we will provide the vaccines. A couple of months ago, I went to the doctor for the first time for an annual checkup. You know, it just it's for this year no masks in the doctor's office i was kind of i was kind of shocked yeah. you don't know what to do when you walk well in. no i Nobody know exactly what to do <laughs> take that yeah. mask off so how long is that is that when the emergency order was lifted so so is the mask rule uh, for the most part, it started phasing out. There are actually a few doctors, um, one that I have an appointment with tomorrow, that actually still require you to wear a mask in, in there. And I was talking with one of our colleagues um, from the hospital here in Berkeley Medical and the other day, and he's like, I said, I haven't been over in a while. I said, is the mask still required? And he goes, oh, no, no, we, we've stopped requiring that. You can still wear them, but we don't require it um, to go in there. But, um, yeah, it's um, it, it, it's kind of – we got so used to it for a while yeah. of just wearing – Everywhere we went, if you walked outside of your house, you just naturally put that mask also, on. Also, weren't you the enforcement department for masks? Well, yeah, Kinda, some sorta. people thought we were. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, we, 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 it must be a more, relief. Then. More so when we were out and, and doing food service inspections and places like that, we were making sure that people were wearing masks because it was mandated by the governor. Yeah. And we must follow that. We are almost uh, at the end of the school year here. I think we've got about a month and a half left. So when do you start vaccinations for kids entering the school system for the first time next year? Anytime. We're open five days a week, 8.30 to 4.30. And if the parents want to go ahead and get the children vaccinated for the school year and they're at the appropriate age for vaccination, they're welcome to call and we will schedule an appointment. And what are the required vaccinations now for school for school well it depends on the age group we have a certain um, schedule and um, there are certain vaccines and they need to be caught up to date um, where will people find out what their, their kids need is that on a they, website they can go to um, just google the West Virginia school schedule for vaccines and that will come up and tell parents and uh, it's so important for parents to take the time to get the children vaccinated on time um, it helps to prevent um, diseases in the school but it's also a blessing when a child is on the schedule they need to be and not made to take a caught up schedule when they're behind on their vaccines. And that's all the responsibility of the parent, getting the child to the doctor or to the health department to get the vaccines on time. Um, it's terrible when a child comes in and they're behind and they need six or seven vaccines. Um, you know, we try to, to break them down and give the ones that are required mm -hmm. for school first and then have them come back in two weeks or 30 days, whatever the requirement is. But uh, it's a big responsibility to stay on that schedule. Daniel, we've run out of time. Thanks so much for coming in this morning. Thank you. Did that go fast? Yes, it did. <laughs> 
You can, re- you can take a breath now. Yes. <laughs> Not till she walks out the door. 